Welcome to the warm-up presented by Community Sports and Therapy. We are in St. Henry to talk Redskin football with head coach Brad Luthman in your third season here at St. Henry. And it's a beautiful day to be out for football, an exciting time, right? I bet you're happy to know that the season is right around the corner. Hey, I tell you what, uh, outside of maybe a week break at the end of the season when you rebreathe and you just take a breath, but after that you're ready to get back to it. So when football season starts again and you get to see the balls in the air, something feels right. So Definitely seems like good energy out there. The guys must be excited to be back. How has camp been going in the early going? Uh, uh, we're displaying some good energy, got some good leadership. Uh, it's it's taken a lot of work because we lost a really good senior class, so we're making some mistakes yet. Uh, but I'd say we're about where we thought we'd be. Uh, not a whole lot now to evaluate until Friday. We're ready to see some pads. You mentioned that you lost 15 seniors to graduation. What What's the biggest loss out of that group? And, and when you graduate a large contingent of guys who led the team, who are you looking to to kind of fill in that role? Well, it, it was a great senior class. I mean, all the credit in the world to those guys last year, I felt like myself as a coach gave a game or two away um, so I'm at never indebted to those guys um, they brought a lot of good energy position wise um, four of them played offensive line started offensive line and our entire secondary was also seniors so that's missing a big key up front and in the back end is what we're looking for You've got some returning guys as well at the skill positions, though. Quarterback Mitch Salmon and, and Jesse Niekamp at running back. Those guys taking on even more of a leadership role this year? They have to. Um, they, they've known that since the offseason that we've talked to them that, hey, it's your turn to fill the role. Um, not only do they got to continue to progress and become better yet at quarterback and tailback, but we're going to be asking them to play defense this year, too, to help us fill the holes that we got in the back end. Last year, six and four, all four losses did come to playoff teams, though, so nothing to hang your head about there. What's the big takeaway from last year? I know you just said that you feel like you gave a game or two away, but all games were competitive. Well, uh, the thing is, you're sitting here in St. Henry, Ohio, if you look at the right boards along the highways, just saying you lost to four playoff teams isn't good enough. You know, you got to be one of the four playoff teams, you got to beat the playoff teams. That's what we're looking to do. Um, at some point, we got to take the next step and expect that of ourselves. Um, big takeaway is that we got more work to do. If we want to get where we want to be it, with relation to the rest of our league and relation to the playoffs and that kind of thing, we need to take care of business week in and week out. Is there a sense of pride for you, your Versailles grad, and playing in the MAC and seeing that they had three state champions, or is it always competitive? What's what's your take on on seeing the success of the conference? Oh, I mean, there's a ton of pride. I mean, I think that's one of the funnest things for me is graduating from Versailles, got to play in the league, and now I get to be on the other side of it, coached at Marion, coaching here at St. Henry now, just knowing a lot of people, a lot of friends throughout the league. But it doesn't make it any funner to be on the wrong end of the scoreboard. Uh, a lot of pride in what Coldwater, Marion, and Minster did last year, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I wasn't a little salty watching Minster make all the memories while we're sitting at home. So. Absolutely. You've got a couple scrimmages coming up, the 15th against Lehman Catholic, and then against OG before you open up at home against Covington. What do you look to get out of those scrimmages? Are guys fighting for position? Is there position battles going on, or is everything kind of set? You just want to see your guys against other competition? Well, we'll start to have some guys in place, but there's definitely still people looking for something to earn during those two scrimmages. We always look forward to those because Coach Roll at Lehman and Coach Shriner at uh, OG, they run their programs right, and we always have a real quality, clean scrimmage. We hit hard, we get a lot out of it, but it never comes to anything. You know, we never have to deal with any issues. Opener against Covington, what's the one thing or a couple of things you're looking to improve most upon before week one? Well, we need to be ready to go up front. Um, can't take on a team like Covington without being stout up front. They're going to pound the ball and pound the ball and pound the ball. Coach Miller's got that program rocking and rolling. Uh, he's got a philosophy, and they execute it. So if we're not ready to go come week one up front, it's going to be a long night. Yeah, and last year you guys started 3-0. and That was important for the team. I assume it's always important to get started well. So home against Covington, then at Eaton before the max schedule, what would it mean to you to go into the max slate 2-0? and Well, I think we have to. I mean, if we want to – accomplish the goals we want to accomplish we have to um eaton's got a new coach this year longtime coach ron neenan retired and uh, their longtime defensive coordinators taking over the program coach davis um they've given us a 
quality battles over the year. We need to go into that thing 2-0. I think even a lesson we learned from last year, you start 3-0, you might feel pretty good about yourself, but high school football has a great way of humbling you because the next three weeks had me about down as far as I could go. Right, week in and week out. It's always, it's always something different, always a grind. Now, for you in your third season, you're building a good program here at St. Henry. What do you expect of your guys every time they step on the practice field and then on game nights? I think our biggest focus on the practice field is tremendous energy, doing things the right way, um, always picking somebody up, always pushing somebody. It, we're getting to the point now. Uh, I can't say it was that way my first year, but we're to the point now. It's not okay just to survive through a conditioning drill or through a practice. Uh, you got to push to get better, and that's the only way that we'll ever take the leap back to where St. Henry was, back to where we want to be. Speaking of that work ethic, did these guys get together in the off season and and work out together before the first official training camp? Um, every every chance we had for weightlifting, these guys got up at 6 a.m. to come in and lift and all that kind of stuff. A lot of credit to all the high school guys because whether it's our school or other schools, I mean, they come to 6 a.m. lift and then they run off to an individual basketball workout. Then they got a shootout. Then they got two Acme games that night. So, uh, I mean, they're busy, but they've kept good attitudes throughout it all and just keep working. What does it mean to you to see the community support that St. Henry gives to the football team, all the athletics, but of course, when you know this, when fall comes around, everybody's excited, everybody's looking forward to week one. What does that mean to you to see as the head coach of this team? Oh, we're blessed. Um, we take a lot of pride in who we play for and in the support we get. Um, you can't, I don't know that every kid gets the fortune of coming out and playing in front of a couple thousand people every Friday night, whether it's in front of your hometown fans or in front of the opponent. So we don't take it lightly. Is there a game you're looking forward to? I always, I feel like I asked you this last year as well about Versailles. It's a personal game for you in the MAC schedule, and then you know you'll play a couple of the state defending state champions as well. Is it week to week, or you have a game circled? Well, of course, the the coach speaks game one. We got to get off to game one. It's just too important to be looking past game one. Right. Um, every game has some little special rivalry to it. Uh, we need to win game one, game two, game three, game four. Is Cold water, which always holds a special place in the St. Henry Heart. Game five, Marion Local, same thing. Game six for me is Versailles. Game seven, New Bremen. Game eight, Minster. That I know that one's going to be a rock'em sock'em again. Game nine, Fort Recovery got us last year, so there's going to be a little bit of a edge there. And then game ten is Anna, and they're going to have a new coach, so that's going to be interesting as well. Each week, you got to show up each and every Absolutely. week. Last question for you. What's the biggest strength right now for this St. Henry football team as we sit here a couple days into training camp? That's a good question. Um, I'd say, obviously, the guys we got back, our tailback, he's shown some great leadership, Jesse has. Mitch has taken a step forward at quarterback. Um, our backfield skill has got to be something we're going to lean on this year. Well, best of luck. Thanks for letting us come out to camp. It's time for a break here on the warm-up, presented by Community Sports and Therapy. After we get back, Mark Koontz is going to chat with some of the Redskin players. Welcome back to the warm-up presented by Community Sports and Therapy. I'm Mark Koontz. We're joined by two more St. Henry football players, Mitch Stallman and Jesse Niekamp. And guys, we just heard from Coach, and he's talked about the backfield, about you two specifically being part of the strength of this year's St. Henry team. Do you feel the pressure going into your senior years? No, not really. I don't think there's really much pressure. All of us seniors as a unit, we kind of come together and lead all the younger guys, show them how to do things. So. It's not really pressure just on one guy or two guys or three guys. It's kind of, kind of all, all of us seniors put together as one. We kind of work together to lead the team. Jesse, you had a little bit of a breakout season last year, one of the leading rushers in the MAC. Is there a target on your back this year? Um, well, people probably definitely know that I'm going to be back this year, but the experience helps, and it's different coming from a – season like that compared to sophomore season but embracing it is all we can do especially with the younger guys. Now coach also mentioned he's going to rely on you guys on the defensive side of the ball as well as the offensive side. Do you like playing running back or cornerback better, safety better? Well I definitely like playing running back better but safety will be fun. It'll be good to be on both sides of the ball, have a little more input in the game it seems like and flying around and hitting. I mean, you get a hit on offense, but to tackle, 
that's always fun too. Mitch, would you rather throw a touchdown or pick off a touchdown? Uh, I don't know. I think I'd rather pick off a touchdown now because I played quarterback the last two years, and I think it'd be kind of fun to go out there and play a little bit of defense this year and kind of see how that goes. Non-conference schedule this year, Mitch, Covington, and then traveling to Eaton. What are you expecting out of those two games as you ramp up for the MAC schedule? Uh, those, team, those two teams are going to bring everything they have right at us. They're always a good team to play. Last two years ago, they both beat us, and last year we both got them. So, and it's always a real competitive game, always a real hard-nosed game, and we've just got to bring our A game to be able to beat them. And if we do the things that coaches teach us, I think we'll be fine. But other than that, yeah, they're both – two really, really good teams, and we have to respect them. Jesse, last year you guys finished 10th in your region, so you were sitting home week 11 watching all the success the MAC had. Did that leave a bitter taste in your mouth? Did that give some fuel for the offseason to get you guys ready for your senior years? Well, yeah, it definitely hurt to have buddies and stuff from other towns. You know they're out there, and we could just as easily bend, but it has us coming back strong, stronger. It, we've been putting in the work in the weight room and camp, and now we're out here ready to start practices. All right, Jesse Niekamp and Mitch Thalman from St. Henry. We're going to take a break here on the warm-up presented by Community Sports and Therapy. We come back more from St. Henry. Done by Community Sports and Therapy, joined now by Justin Rindler and Paul Stallman. And Justin, we'll begin with you. What was the offseason like for St. Henry? Uh, it was kind of, I mean, it was down knowing that all your teammates or all the other teams are still playing in week 11, but it was a lot of rebuilding, a lot of strengthening, a lot of getting quicker. I think it was really productive for the offseason. Paul, obviously, we're just a few days into training camp. Are you seeing some results paying off from that hard work in the offseason? Oh, yeah. I know it's a change in a lot of guys. A lot of guys are bigger and faster. Um, we definitely still have to find our urgency a little bit. we got to get back to our football grind a little bit. But other than that, uh, a lot of guys are still going hard, and all season work definitely paid off. What would you like to see get accomplished between now and that first game with uh, Covington? Paul? we got to definitely figure out how to guard their offense, and we all got to know our rules better. we got to – build a trust. We got to know that the person to the left of me is going to make their play and I'll make mine. Justin, we've heard about this backfield, the talent back there. What's the line looking like? Line's looking a little wet behind the ears still. A lot of young guys, but they're getting there. I mean, they're big guys. They're just going to learn their position soon enough. Do you see promise in those young guys oh, on yeah. the line with you? A lot of potential. I feel like they're going to be good for years to come. Paul, as you look at the MAC, we know how difficult it is week in and week out. You can't take any weeks off. What games are you looking forward to the most once conference begins? Definitely cold water at home. That'll be great. Uh, then Marion. It's always fun playing them. It's the usual, but basically every MAC game is pretty fun. It's always a little bit of rival in each team we play. And St. Henry opens MAC play at Parkway, game you will see here on WOSN. That's going to do it for us tonight on the warm-up presented by Community Sports and Therapy. I'd like to thank all of our guests from Matt Finkel and Amber Chambers. I'm Mark Kutz. We'll see you next time here on WOSN.